Alright, my man, state your name and let them know you on Real Talk with Nick. My name is Ivan, and I'm on Real Talk with Nick. That's what's up, man. Now, before we start, man, this is your second time coming back on the show. Yes. I appreciate you. You was explosive on the part one of this yes. talk of Nick's. Yes. Now we got some more to talk about, man. The last time I interviewed you, we was talking about what the Knicks would be like with the signing of Macau Bridges. Yes. Now we have Macau Bridges. Yes. What does that mean for the Knicks organization and the Knicks fans alike? Well, for the Knicks organization, with the signing of, signing of Michael Bridges, I think it's the right move. Like I said, moving in the right direction. So I think it was a good sign. You think it's a good sign? Yes. So what's going to improve now that we have Macau Bridges? Well, I think consistency in scoring is going to improve, and I think the defense will be better with Michael Bridges. We can expect him to give us at least... 25 points or more per game consistently because he's a scorer. He's a scorer? Yes. How you feel about his defensive game? I feel like his defense game is just as good as the others because like I say, most the NBA players today don't play defense. So I'd say his defense is average, but I still think he's going to improve the next game. Next. Yeah, when he was with the Brooklyn Nets, he was averaging a 21 points. Yes. So you got him up even more I with the Knicks. Points, 25 points because I think he'll be more open most of the time because they have to worry about Brunson. So I think he'll get a lot more open shots. And what I like about Matthew Bridges, he likes to take the ball to the basket. I believe if he's a ball handler, you should always challenge the defense. Take it, try to take it to the basket, make him follow you. You go to the free throw line and make you free throws. Okay. Yeah. What do you say to the critics who say that the Knicks got three undersized guards, man? Is that a concern? No, that's not a concern to me because they got speed and they got ball handling skills. So to me, that's not a concern because speed can overcome a lot of things. Height, speed. Once they get a first step on the defense, defense going to be in trouble. So... I don't think that's a bad thing. You don't think it's a bad thing? No. And the signing of OG and Anobi, man. They gave him 200 and I believe 12, between 212 and 215 mil. Is he worth that? Yes, he worth that. Compared to all the other NBA players, he worth that. And I think he going to show us. Thank you, Jesus. You're welcome, my brother. So, no problem. I think he's going to show us where he worked it when the season started. He's going to show us that he worked it. Like I said, he's a hard-working player. And he deserves every penny he gets. And like if the Knicks didn't sign him, like I say, a lot of other teams would have been glad to snatch him up. So I think that's a good sign. I think it's a good sign. Yes. Because it would have been a disaster if they didn't get him after giving up R.J. Barrett and Emmanuel quickly. Yes. It would have been a disaster because, like I said, he can rebound, he can play defense, and he can score. And we really need that in our NBA player. Once he's on the court, it opens up everything for Brunson, no, Bridges, and everybody else. And like I said, he defends the basket. And I think he's a good player to be on any team. To be on any team? Yes, he's a good player. Okay, do you think that's going to be the engine with OG and Anobi, with the Vanilla Boys, the Vanilla Boys? Yes, I think so. That will be the engine for for them. We guarantee anybody we go up against, we'll be hard to beat. Even Boston? Even Boston will be hard to beat. But hey, once we got those guys on the court, we'll be hard to beat. Now, this is a question I ask another interview. I asked them if... Randall was healthy, Julius yes. Randall. Do you yes. think we would have been able to face the Boston Celtics, let alone beat them? I think we could have faced them, and I think we could have beat them. You still if, don't think we could have beat them? I think we could have beat them. Oh, we could have. If he was healthy. If he was healthy. Because, like I said, with Randall and Brunson, those two players, I would look for them to give me at least 50-plus per game combined. And I think with the other players, I think we could have beat Boston. And I think um, with Boston, guys got to learn to challenge Tatum and Brown. 
because they like to come down the middle and the guys just clear the lane for them. No, you got to get them hard fouls, not dirty fouls, but hard fouls. You got to hit them. Now, when we speak of that of the refs, because yes. sometimes the refs can be the, the missing factor with bad co officiating and stuff like that. So yes. sometimes you got to play for... I mean, when we speak of Nick fans watching the game, yes, we always saying, damn, we got to play against the opponent and the refs. The refs. Sometimes the refs miss the calls. And sometimes I wonder if they miss it on purpose or not. Because when it comes to professional sport, there's a lot of gambling goes on. Right. So I don't know if the ref, whatever, they're done with the program. Because I don't, with, with how many they have? Two or two referees or three referees, three referees in a game, right? Right. I don't think they should miss the call. If you miss the call, the other two are supposed to pull your side and tell you you missed the call. They shouldn't have to go to the replay and all that bullshit. There's three guys out there. And if you miss a call, they should call you to the side. Say that again, just in case the, the the Knicks haters ain't hear that. Yes. It should be. If you got three referees out there, if one guy missed the call, the other two refs are supposed to see it. And if they see it was a foul, call him, call time out, call him to the side. You ain't got to go to no uh, replay, replay and all that. Just tell him, look, you made a bad call. Give the other team the ball. Okay. Because we shouldn't be losing no game especially close games, on a, a missed call. Okay. Now I want to tell you about the picks, man. Yeah. We gave up a lot of picks from Macau Bridges. Yes. A lot of people, the majority of Knicks fans is optimistic. They feel, well, them picks don't mean nothing. We got the missing piece. Yes. As far as, you know, Jalen Brunson, DiVincenzo, Josh Hart. How you feel about that? You should have well, said. I would say I feel good about the picks because we can't discount them. We don't never we didn't see them really play a lot in the NBA. We don't know how they're gonna play. So we have to give them a fair chance. So so you think it was a good move? Yeah, I think it's a good move. You always have to give new picks a fair chance. Because But we gave up a lot of picks. Yeah, we gave up a lot. But I think why we gave up a lot of picks, we trying to win the championship. And the Knicks don't want to wait another ten years. They're trying to get it now. So we gave up picks. It's like a gamble. We gave up picks hoping that the new guys that we get will help the team and help us to go into a championship. Now, I'm going to ask you a question, man. The 90 Knicks was beloved. I'm yeah. speaking of that of Patrick Ewing, yeah. Anthony Mason, yes. Charles Smith, so forth. Yes. Is today's Knicks moving in a direction where they could be just as good, if not better? I wouldn't say better. I'd say maybe just as good. Because with Charles Smith and Ewing and them, when we played against Houston and we lost the sixth game at the Garden, I felt like the referee cheated. Also, I was mad with Charles Smith because time was running out. Got the rebound on the basket. He went up, he missed. But like five like, times. Yeah, but he was fouled. Times. Oh, he was fouled nearly every time he got. And that's why I said the referee cheated that game. That's why we, we, we would not have to go back to Houston and lose. But why I was mad with Charles Smith in that game He's big enough. He should have dumped, dumped the ball. But he keeps trying to back, hit it off the backboard. You know what I'm saying? All he had to go up strong and dunk it. But he didn't do it. But a lot of basketball fans tell me that the referee don't call a foul with a few seconds to go. He would never call a foul. But my thing is, a foul is a foul. Whether it started in the first second of the game or the last second of the game. You have to call a foul when you see. But I feel we were cheated. Okay. At that game affair. That's why we didn't have the championship. But that was the worst. We should have never had to go back to Houston. I feel like the ref took that one away from us. Okay. Now, I want to talk about the Chicago Bulls. This is the reason why I'm talking about the Chicago Bulls. Because yes. it's going to line up with a question I have for you concerning Tom Dibodeau as a head coach. Yes. Chicago Bulls, world champions, six straight. Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, B.J. Armstrong. Boys, boys. The boys, all right? That we was, hated they, them. Yeah, they had a, we hated them because it was Knicks killers. Yeah. Because nearly every year, the Knicks and the Bulls play for who going to the, to the finals. Right. And it always got five games. Now, this is the question I have for you. Yeah. With all that talent. Yes. 
was Phil Jackson that much of a great coach, or what? Or did the talent super precede itself? I think the talent super preceded preceded itself because I think we, you, if you we know a little about basketball, right? But I believe if you have a good team, great players, you don't have to coach them plenty a lot for them to win. Because it was winners. It was a winning team. They could go out there by themselves and win the game. And they could get among themselves and know when one won a rest or one won a rest. Because in basketball, it's not an individual sport. It's a team sport. And you could be the best player in the NBA, or one of the best players in the NBA, and never win a ring. It's not because he wasn't a great player. He was playing on a bad team. Because a lot of people like to say, the guys that have the most rings is the better player. To me, that's bullshit. If you're on a winning team, you can win a ring without ever scoring one point, sitting on the bench because you was lucky enough to be on a winning team. That's all it takes, a winning team. No individual player can win it by himself. I don't care how many rings he have. He didn't win it by himself. Okay, so now I'm going to throw that same question with on um, Tom Dibber, though, as a head coach. Yes. With the talent that the Knicks got now. Yes. Mikhail Bridges, Julius Randle, DiVincenzo, Jalen Brunson, mm -hmm. Josh Hart, yes. Deuce McBride. Yes. Is this the same sentiment when we speak of that of there's so much talent yes. on the Knicks yes. that Tom Dibodeau don't even have to do that much coaching, man? Are we well, there no, yet? He may got to do some coaching a lot. We don't think we're there like the teams like you said, the Bulls, the Jordan and Pippen. And it's all not the stuff. same? You don't think no, we're there yet? But he will got to coach. But I think if he don't do it this year, he got to go. He got to go? Yeah, if he don't do it this year. We don't go all the way this year or make it to the playoff this year. If we don't make the finals, he had, a, he had his chances. He had his chances. Time to bring in new blood, some, some another coach. He got to go. I think he was with us long They just enough. extended his contract. I, think he yeah, got like they, the... I know they extended, but I think extending it, they should only extend it for a year. They can't be giving them these three, four, five years extension. Because, like I say, if we don't go to the finals this year, right, or win the whole thing, Right. I think it's time for a change in leadership. We okay. Need no coach. Now, I'm not high on Tom Dibodeau, but yes. I'm going to be fair. Yes. He has gotten the Knicks to the playoffs since he arrived. Yes. That got to count for something, man. It I mean, it's for, been a drought, yeah, man. Yeah, it's count for something. But guess what? My thing is, all that is great. But if we don't get to the final this year, I don't think we should waste time on him. He's not going to get there. I don't think so. Maybe another coach will get a steal. So who would you like to, to see replace Tom Thibodeau? Um, well, like I say, any coach that they bring in. No, 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 no. We don't need no any coach. Well, I'm saying. Because when they did the any coach I know. movement, yes. we got David Fisdale. Yes. That was a joke. A joke. We got Jeff Honasat. Yes. That was a joke. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And we don't want to repeat that, man. Well, we anyway, need... guess what I think we'll replace him? Mark Jackson? I think he deserves he deserve a chance because when he was good Golden State, he was winning and they got rid of him. I think if he had stayed with Golden State, they still would have won the championship because they had the players and he built up a good system there. And when Cole come in, he didn't change much. He continued with the system that Jackson built. But I think Jackson should get a chance. I think I'll give Ewing a chance. Patrick Ewing? I'll give him a chance. He was a Nick, he was a great Nick player, and he know the game of basketball. And everybody getting chances, I think a lot of Knicks fans will be happy to see Patrick get a chance to coach the Knicks. I think he will do a that good job. That would be job. nice. I think he'll do a good job. He coached in college, but I think with the Knicks, he will do a good job. Patrick Ewing was a defensive player, very defensive player. He could teach you big men things they probably don't know, like Randall. He would be a help to the team. And as a Knicks fan, I'd be very happy to see Patrick Ewing. Uh, uh, Mark Jackson coaching. Now, yes. speaking of centers, yes. this turmoil between the trading of Isaiah Hardestine, a lot of Knicks yes. feel that he fleeced mm -hmm. the Knicks, that we got Isaiah Hardestine where he was at and he short-handed us 
and went to OKC. How do you feel about Isaiah Hardesty now being with the uh, Oklahoma Thunder? Well, and Mitchell and, Robinson still with yeah, us. I wish that it was the Mitchell Robinson went and Hardesty stayed with us. I would have paid him his money too to keep him because good centers in the NBA is very hard to find. But he going to OKC. No, I'm not a fan of his anymore. I hope his game got down, but long as he leave the neck. I don't know what reason why he leave the neck, but you leave the neck, it's like well, not high Well, OKC money. paid him, I believe, $87 million for three years. Well, a, there goes another thing. Like I said, I felt like he he was he involved keeping, and the Knicks have the money. You I think they had the money to pay him? And I could have come up with the money to keep him. Carl, you're not going to find a player like him. Just say that. It can take a while. Like I say, he had a good game to me. As a big man, he can score, he can block shots, he can shoot free throws. He was intimidating. I would not have given him the hand because big men in the NBA is hard to say. It's not like when Patrick then was playing. You have Patrick, Elijah Warren, Robert Parrish. You had all these big guys, you know what I'm saying? Right. Who played just that position. But the game of basketball today has changed. They're like, they don't play inside out. Everybody just do the thing. Do you think the love for the game change? Well, I don't think the love for the game change. Basketball, we don't always have basketball lovers, no matter who play. We just love the game, and it ain't going to change. The players, the style of play, it change. I remember I used to watch Will Chamberlain play. And the guards would come down, and he'd be under the basket, got his arms up, he'd be laughing, and they'll come right to the basket and go back out. Cause then if they try to shot, he's gonna block it. And I used to say, challenge him, challenge him. But they know better than me. They never challenge me. They always come back out. Yeah? Yeah, but I don't, I don't, I really that the guy with the ball have the advantage. And no matter how big he is, he's challenged, he should challenge you, try to fake you or what. Yeah, you may get it blocked, but you may get, you may make some shots. But yeah, well, you should just sit there by the feature line his arms up and they come down, he's smiling, and they go under the basket and take it back out because they know you're going to get it blocked. Or I think they're going to get it blocked. But as a basketball fan, and I'm a little guy, I used to say, challenge that guy. Who's the greatest guard the Knicks mm -hmm. ever had? The greatest guard the Knicks ever had, like you said, I told you, Clyde, to me, I just was hanging with him. I like his game, his toughness. Clyde could have played the whole game. Now, go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, flow general, he sees the flow. He know when to pass the ball, he don't hug the ball. But the ball in his hands, you know he was in good hands, the best hand. Okay, and we gonna end it like this, OG. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, yes. happy 75th birthday, man. Oh yeah, thank you. Man. Last time I saw you, your birthday was approaching. This Coach, man is 75 years old, old, man. And every time I run across this man, my man's balling. All right. He ain't playing bingo, y'all. He's out here yeah, I like little, balling. I got a little exercise in. Yeah, man. I be but seeing you, man. I hey, see guys, you. That's what? You see this fence here? Yeah. I didn't bring my soccer ball. I got a soccer ball. Oh, shit. He kick ass, too, man. No, no, no. I'm not <laughs> keep the legs strong. No, no, no. I'm friend. just teasing. But... I'm just saying. Keep the legs strong. Yeah. You got a frisbee. And all this I got to buy myself. I don't need nobody. Most guys, you know, my age, your guys, you know, even younger, 50 years, 40 years, very lazy. Let's go to the park. Oh, this, oh, that. I said, no, man. Only person going to disappoint me is me. Yeah, well, let me tell you, for the past month, I've been jogging, man. Oh, yeah. I, do I, jog. I jog, I jog a lot man. of jogging, speed walking. Yeah, 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 yeah. But this is the question I want to ask you, brother. Yes. If uh, Clyde Frazier, right? Yes, Who yes. you said is the greatest guard I ever wore a Nick jersey. Yeah, that I ain't seen. Okay. Yes. If he was the same age as Jalen Brunson, yeah, you, mm -hmm. and he was playing with the same players yes. that Jalen Brunson was playing with this past season that just passed, yes, how far would the Knicks have gone? Not a, not far. You don't think so? Nah, because as good as, as good as my man Clay is, like I said, he ain't had the pieces around him. Like I said, it's not even though Clay, like you're not an individual team. It's not one man. You need you need a center. You need 
forwards. You need shooting. So guard. you don't think Clark could have got a a a a a a, a, a ring with this bunch with, we have? Yeah. No, because they can't make free throws. Like I said, they can't make free throws. Then most they're not consistent. The scoring is up and down. And like I say, you could be the, the best player in the world. If you don't have a winning team, you will never win. You can go out there and score 60 points. Look at our man, Bernard Gay. He used to be scoring 50 points, 60 points. He was a scorer. One of the best scorers the Knicks ever had. Shooter, right? But he never got a win. Guys, like I say, he was an individual. He didn't have the team to bring it home. You just opened up another question. Yes. If the Knicks would have never had traded Bernard King. Yes. And he was playing alongside with Patrick Ewing. Yes. Do you think the Knicks would have had more rings? I think we could have won a ring with him because, like I said, you put the ball with the rings with Bernard King, or with the ring, or we would have won a ring with King Pat and Pat. Yes, we have a better chance. Because, like you say, you know, he used, um, Bernard King was hard to stop. You know, he could go out there at least give you thirty plus per game, and in basketball, that is very hard to do. With these players we have out there today. They're very hard today. The consistency is not. And in basketball, you really have to be a complete player. It ain't all about scoring. You have to learn to play defense. You have to be able to make your free choice in order for you to be a great player and in order for you to help your team win. Because like you said, with free, a lot of people don't think free choice is, is, is a big part of the game. It's one of the biggest part of the game because if you're shooting free throws like 60%, 70%, that's not a good thing to me. I want you up there in the 80s plus, 80s, 90s plus shooting free throws. Because I think that that should be one of the easiest shots in basketball because you're all, all alone. Yes, and it's with rhythm. If you shoot first one and the going, you shouldn't miss the second one because you're shooting in with them. Same, same. Same with them all the time. You're going to make the shots. You can't change it. You shoot harder, you're going to hit the, the, hit the rim, the back of the rim or whatever. So you just got to learn you with them. And I say, doing that, it, that comes from practice. Practice. You know how to shoot. And it comes from practice. And, and like I say again, I'm happy these guys are making all this money because the owners is making the money. The fans is paying for them to make the money. And... They deserve to get big salaries, but in a sense, you got to earn it. You can't be getting big salaries and only average four points per game. I think this should be the NBA players are professional sports. Everybody start with a baseline here. 10,000, no, 10 million, 20 million, 25 million, start. The, the, the superstars start at a little higher, 35 million. But I believe they should got the rest of the money should be in a pot. Bonus. The guys who performed best at the end of the season, they get the biggest bonuses. The better you play for the team, the bigger your bonus. I think if they was to do it like that, guys would play harder because they know they want to get a good bonus. And they only get that good bonus, that extra money, if they go out here and earn it. So you give them an incentive to want to play. Not that he got a guarantee 50 million a year or 45 million a year. No. Being pay you, guarantee you 20, 25 million a year. The out of 25 million or 30 million, you got in that part. A guy, let's say a guy who's not a superstar, maybe I guarantee him 15, 20 million a year. If he was supposed to get 25, 30, that other 10 million going in the pot. So the owners ain't saving no money. The money is there in the pot. Then at the end of the season, look at all the stats, the production of the players. If you, you don't produce nothing, you don't get no bonus, or your bonus can be down there. And the bonus goes up, the guys who perform the best. All right, and that's yeah. what it is. And, and it gives you an incentive to want to work harder because you know you the money's earn, there the money's in the pot you just gotta earn it you gotta earn it 
All right, and that's what it is with the OG, 75 years young. Yes. Yo, I think he'll bust my ass, man, basketball. Well, sometimes do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know you. I know you'll bust my ass, man. Playing young boys like 18, 19, or whatever. And you be killing them, right? They, they can't be tough, because then they brought me shot. But they must size, I would try to get a lead. Playing 21, I try to get like a five point, six point lead. They were saying, Pops, you can shoot a center, Pops is lucky. Pops can't shoot, Pops is lucky. And I know once I got a six point lead, the game is mine. I'll be quiet, playing and talking a lot of crap. Hey, that goes to show you youngsters, man, respect your elders, oh, man. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you got it. And we out, peace.